So the Fuji X-T200 is probably one of the best hybrid cameras on the market right now. It's the perfect mix of a casual everyday shooting and vlogging camera with features you only find in a pro photo and video camera. So is the Fuji X-T200 actually worth it and how does it compare to cameras like the Canon M50 or the Sony a6100? Because let's be honest, you're also looking at those cameras. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with camera gear. I'm basically here to help you find the perfect camera. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. It helps me keep making more of this content for you guys and subscribe if you wanna see more of this stuff. And as always, all the products and cameras that we talk about today, I'll leave links down below. So let's get into the video. So first things first, let's talk about image quality. Cause if you're getting a Fuji camera, you care about image quality. So let me start off with a little bit of nerdiness. What makes Fuji cameras really special is the fact that they have analog 35 millimeter film emulations built right in. Wow, that's a mouthful. But basically you hear about everybody trying to make their images look like 35 millimeter film and this camera actually does it because Fuji actually makes the 35 millimeter films that most people shoot on. So they've simply taken that chemical process and put it in the camera. I really like the look of Proneg High and Classic Chrome. They gave me a really interesting look and I was even able to go in and further tweak those film emulations to really give myself a unique look. But one thing to note, this camera has a 24 megapixel sensor, which is a D Bayer sensor and not the standard 26 megapixel sensor, which is the Fuji X-Trans sensor. Now, if you didn't understand any of that, that's fine. This does not apply to you. But if you're a camera nerd like me, this does not have the same sensor as the standard Fuji camera. So the film quality is a little bit lower, but, but, but most people will not notice it unless you're a hardcore professional. And in the case that you do notice it, the Fuji X-T3 or the X-T30 is pretty close to price and it's probably closer to what you're looking for. Personally, I was still really impressed by the quality of this camera. So let's talk about specs and how does this camera compare to the Sony a6100 and the Canon M50. When it comes to photos, this camera does eight frames per second, which is compared to the 10 frames per second in Canon M50 and the 11 frames per second in the Sony a6100. Personally, I don't think the frame rate is the end of the world, but what I do have a problem with is the fact that this camera has a really small buffer. So if you're looking to do events, or sports something where if you miss the moment, it's gone forever, I would not use this camera. Those other cameras have a much larger buffer and will do a much better job keeping up in a high pace environment. But for everything else, this camera will do just fine and I actually do think it's worth taking that little bit of a hit on your photo speed for the Fuji colors. Next up, let's talk about video because I think that's where this camera really shines. When it comes to video frame rates, this camera does full HD up to 60 frames per second with a special slow motion mode where it actually does 120 frames per second. Now, just to be clear, you cannot record 120 frames per second in real time. You have to record 120 seconds and the camera will internally slow it down for you. And in this mode, there's also no sound. The video frame rates are pretty on par with the Sony a6100, which costs just about the same. But what makes this camera really impressive is the 4K at 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second with no crop. And the 4K in this camera is really sharp and detailed. It is easily something I would use for a travel film or a professional project. However, speaking of professional projects, this camera does not have a flat profile or any kind of cinema profile for color grading, but I don't think that's a problem specifically because of the built-in analog film emulations. In comparison, the Canon M50 and A6100 do not have flat profiles, nor do they have film emulations built in. In my opinion, I think that's one point for the Fuji X-T200. And I have to stress this, the 4K in this camera looks spectacular. That's because it uses a 6K image, down samples it to 4K, which Sony also does, but that is the main reason this camera looks so sharp and detailed. But again, it only does this in 4K mode. One downside of this camera in video mode is the rolling shutter. It's pretty prevalent. Personally, I think you only notice it when you whip pan your camera, which I never really do. Again, when it comes to photos or videos, this camera is really not meant for someone that's doing a lot of run and gun or anything fast paced. Vlogging is the exception. This camera is a great vlogging camera. Personally, for me, this is one of the best everyday cameras or a camera that I would go traveling with. In fact, I do plan to take this camera to Prague next month specifically because I love the colors in this camera and I'm gonna come back home with some epic photos and videos. 
So yes, I do own this camera. And one of my favorite things to do is actually go for walk and take photos. I find it very relaxing and the M200 is perfect for that. And the one thing it always needs is music. So for that reason, I actually use the sponsor of this video, Element Duo by Vunix Sound. The sound from these headphones is rock solid, crisp highs, and great bass. They are actually incredibly comfortable and perfect for everyday and long periods of listening. They are easy to use, easy to pair, and the user experience is phenomenal. Best of all, the battery life is terrific. They will easily last me all day. In my opinion, it is absolutely the best deal if you want wireless earbuds without compromising quality. You can check them out in the link down below. They have become my daily drivers and I think you will love them too. So next up, let's talk about autofocus. So when it comes to autofocus, there's a bit of a debate. A lot of people say Fuji is just as good as Canon and Sony. Well, this camera does have great autofocus with face tracking and eye tracking. And in photo mode, the autofocus is solid. But basically every single camera manufacturer out there does good photo autofocus, it's like water being wet. But one thing to note, the face tracking and eye tracking does not work if you have a mask on. However, when it comes to video autofocus, that's where brands tend to struggle. In my personal opinion and experience from somebody that owns Canon cameras, Fuji cameras, and Sony cameras, Sony and Canon are like a 10. Fuji is closer to a seven. If you're someone that really needs your autofocus to be set it and forget it, unfortunately, I don't think Fuji is the brand for you. In that case, I do recommend looking at Sony. However, I have to say, I do think the Fuji colors are absolutely worth the struggle. I do recommend getting one and sacrificing the autofocus. One thing that really surprised me about this camera was the digital stabilization. It was surprisingly good. Fuji's never really been known for the digital stabilization and this camera does a spectacular job. And it also has something called digital gimbal mode that uses gyroscope data in the camera to determine what angle, what level your camera is moving at to stabilize it internally. Personally, I thought it looked good, but it wasn't really worth it because in this mode, you can only shoot at full HD up to 30 frames per second and your field of view is heavily cropped. For those two reasons, I don't really think I'm gonna use it ever. Finally, let's talk about design because that's one thing I'm really excited about. Much like the film emulations built into this camera that are meant to evoke a vintage 35 millimeter feel, the camera body itself is no different. This absolutely looks and feels like a vintage camera if that's your thing. But have no fear, it still has all the modern dials and buttons that you would want on a modern camera. This does not feel like an old camera, it simply looks like one. And it has modern touches like a side articulating screen which is great for vlogging and very user friendly. On top of that, this side articulating screen is also a touch screen for touch autofocus and changing your settings. But personally, this is one of those cameras that you're mainly going to use with the physical buttons. The menus on this camera aren't too great, but I'm gonna talk more about that later. The only thing that I would change on this camera physically is the very small record button, but I mainly find myself in video mode and I usually use the shutter button for that function. And two things that I absolutely love about this camera when it comes to design is one, you pull this lever and the flash comes up. I love just, mm, very satisfying. Second, this dial right here on the left, when you turn it, it actually changes your film emulations. So you can simply frame up a shot, change your emulation and just see what looks good. Side note, it actually has a headphone jack for external audio, which is great, but it also has a USB type C adapter that goes into the side port that will allow you to plug in a set of headphones so you can actually record external audio with this and also listen to it where most cameras at this price point and in this form factor only give you an external jack for external audio, do not give you a headphone jack. So this is a big plus. But let's talk about two things design wise that I absolutely hate on this camera. Number one, the menus are hot garbage. Sony cameras are known for having cumbersome menus where it's just pages and pages and pages. But personally, these menus are not user friendly. They're not intuitive and they're just kind of a pain. But after a couple of days of shooting, I was able to figure out these menus, but that did not make them fun to use. And the second downside that I noticed with this camera is that you could not customize any of these buttons to change your ISO. If I ever wanted to change ISO, I had to go into the menus, change it there, and then go back to shooting. Personally, I just found myself keeping it either at 400 or 800, depending on the time of day, but that is definitely a pain. I wish they had an option of maybe even turning this emulation button to the ISO. That would have been great. Last but not least, the battery in this camera I find is just decent. I found myself shooting with it 
for about a day to a day and a half without needing to recharge, but it's definitely a battery you're going to need spares of if you plan on shooting all day on a trip or something. This camera has great colors, but that doesn't mean you're gonna get great results if you don't know how to use your camera. Maybe this is your first camera or you're simply looking to take your photos and videos to the next level. In that case, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. In this course, I'm gonna show you how to take your beginner or budget level camera and make it perform like a $3,000 professional camera. I'm gonna show you every tiny detail that you need to know to master your camera on a technical level. And then I'm gonna show you all of my creative secrets to take your work from looking just okay to becoming Instagram bangers. I'm gonna help you take your photos and videos to the next level without having to waste thousands of dollars on expensive camera gear. Because here's what no one tells you. You don't need expensive camera gear. What you need are skills and knowledge. So if you're interested or ready to take your work to the next level, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below and I'll see you in the course. So last but not least, let's talk about comparisons. Is the Fuji X-T200 worth it? And how does it stack up to the competition? In my opinion, the Fuji X-T200 is a great daily driver, a great everyday camera, and specifically a fantastic 4K video and 4K vlogging camera. If you want something that's super easy to use in this price point, the closest thing you have is the Canon M50 Mark I or Mark II. But that camera does not have good 4K, but it is extremely easy to do and the colors look great. I would recommend getting the Fuji camera if you want more of a unique look, more of an artsy look to your photos and videos. However, if you don't plan on doing anything casual with your camera and you want to do something serious or semi-serious, I actually do recommend getting the a6100 or Sony a6400 over the Fuji X-T200. The Fuji X-T200 has great colors for video, but simply put, the a6100 is going to give you more flexibility with the newer Sony Venice colors and the A6400 actually has S-Log built right in with cinema gamut. So if you wanna do heavy color grading, Sony is the way to go. But one thing to note, the Sony cameras do not have a side articulating screen and they do not have video stabilization built in, which in my opinion is kind of a bummer. But the Sony cameras are absolute beasts and they have a ton of horsepower. However, if you still want a Fuji camera, but you just want a little bit more horsepower out of your camera, I do recommend looking into either the Fuji X-T3 or the X-T30. The price point is pretty similar to this camera without a lens, but you will get a massive leap in quality, specifically because the X-T3 line has higher data rates for video and it has a 26 megapixel X-Trans sensor. Well guys, that's pretty much it for my review on the Fuji X-T200. I think it's a fantastic camera for someone that wants to shoot casually every day with a little bit of an artistic flair. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this camera and what camera you're thinking of getting. And if you wanna learn how to take your work to the absolute next level, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below and I'll either see you in the next video or the course. Peace.